Hello folks, Shin Tiger Curl here, that dude in the straw hat, bringing you yet another wrestling review. I'm of course joined by my roommate and fellow internet superstar, Joe. Say hi, Joe. He really doesn't like this. He really doesn't like John Morrison. Well, it's Friday night. You know what that means. Time for some Smackdown. It's the Friday, bef it's the final show before Money in the Bank, which is uh, or an average pay-per-view with a interesting premise that has turned into perhaps the biggest and most important pay-per-view in the recent history of the WWE. How are they going to build it up for these last few in the last 48 hours? I got my notes. Let's get started. Um, <coughs> Sorry. Randy Orton comes out to be interviewed by Josh Matthews. And he says, of course, being kind of being bland Randy Orton, that he intends to go to Money in the Bank. Uh, sorry. He intends to go to Money in the Bank and retain his title. Christian appears on the Titan Tron, baiting him, telling him get, that he presents a present to him, which is a picture of him holding the belt over Randy Orton's prone body after he laid him out with the belt. Uh, he then go, Christian then goes on to talk about Orton's family, particularly his father, Hall of Fame wrestler Cowboy Bob Orton, and the fact that Orton, um, that, that Bob um, wore a um, cast on his arm for seven years, even though his arm was perfectly fine. It was a gimmick of his. Orton then tried to fire back, but it's pretty obvious that Christian is the better promo cutter of the two. Not, nothing against Orton. I like him well enough. It's just he's very bland on the on the mic. First match: Ted DiBiase versus Ezekiel Jackson for the WWE Intercontinental Title. Now, last week, um, Ted Boring got himself was able to pin um, Ezekiel Jackson in a title in a in a non-title tag match. So now he's got a chance at the shot at the belt. Uh, this is pretty much your. Even though um, Ted did get some offense in, this was pretty much all Jackson. There's no way Ted Jr. is going to win. I mean, considering his record right now, that is sing they had a singles record, he hasn't won since May of this year, kind of dims the hope of you actually winning the belt, especially against a man mountain like Ezekiel Jackson. Long story short, Zeke hits the torture rack. He starts, tap he starts tapping like Savion fucking Glover. Zeke wins. Backstage, Dash, Dr. Doom Cody Rhodes is not pleased, and he was going to show him how it's done. Uh, we move on to the next match, Daniel Bryan versus Dr. Doom Cody Rhodes. Now, I've often said this a lot, this is one of my favorite current running um, storylines in SmackDown, if not in the WWE. These two have a great chemistry in the ring, and it shows tonight. They really left it all out there. Both of them wanted to send a message. Because, as you know, both of them are in the Money in the Bank ladder match this Sunday for the SmackDown side. It was a nice little back and forth matchup, kind of distracting with um, Cole and Booker bickering about shit. But in the end, Dashing Cody, I mean formerly Dashing Cody, picks up the win. Which, which is okay, since they've both been batting wins back and forth, so this furthers the feud. Next up, we have some backstage crap with Jinder Mahal and the Great Khali. Now, if you didn't, if you didn't know, it turns out that Jinder Mahal is married to the um, Great Khali's sister or cousin—I forget which—and um, he's for, and because the Mahals were so much richer than they are, than his family, he is forced to do. He's uh, Khali is forced to be uh, Mahal's bodyguard and enforcer. To, full, to further his own um, his own career, which is kind of shitty because this guy really has nothing special, other than the fact that he sounds like a tour a, an Indian tourist attraction, Jinder Mahal. Mm. Next up, Christian cuts a series of promos against Randy Orton. The first of which he talks about um, Randy's bus. He is looking at Randy's personal private bus, and on the side of it. He's shocked to discover that it says Randy Orton sucks, Tay Long is something something, Christian is the um, uncrowned champion. Christian is of course surprised and he swears to Randy that he will find the culprit responsible for this atrocity. Um, spoiler alert, it 
was Christian. Anyway, next up is Sheamus versus Sin Cara for the first time ever, actually. I think. Well, if it correct me if I'm wrong, but yeah. Sheamus, and this will be the first time on SmackDown that Sheamus and Sin Cara have ever faced off because these two are also in the Money in the Bank ladder match. Last week, um, Sheamus decided to lay out a lot of the, the participants with a steel chair, among which is one of, is the guest um, guest sit-in superstar for this segment is Wade Barrett. Now this is a pretty good match. Sin Cara is getting a lot better in the ring, working with the new with the WWE style. He's not as botchy as before, and his high flying style is a great contrast to the rough and tumble, highly physical style of Sheamus. Long story short. Um, Sikara wins. Sheamus is of course upset, but he doesn't see old. He, but he doesn't see old wait, ooh, Marble Mouth come up from behind and hit him with his own version of the bro kick. He then hits the wasteland and tells him, yeah, "You're going. I'm going to win this match, fella." Marble Mouth. Uh, next up, we have another backstage segment with um, with Christian, where he goes to a casino after stealing Andy Orton's wallet and takes his money and bets it all on the roulette and loses. There's that. Not his money. Next up, we have a confrontation between The Big Show and Mark Henry. Now, I have to say, this has actually become a pretty interesting feud. This has become very physical over the last couple of weeks. Mark Henry's new heel turn is very refreshing and very impressive from, a, from what I've seen his work. I mean, I've been watching Mark Henry since the Attitude Era when he debuted as Sexual Chocolate and he was with the Nation of Domination with D'Lo Brown, The Godfather and The Rock and Owen Hart. So, but this is this more this is the most, most aggressive and most beastly that, that we've seen from him. He st he talks that that everything that happened is the big show's fault because a few weeks ago he was the un Mark Henry was on the unfortunate end of a big show beatdown to progress the um, storyline that the Big Show had with Mark Henry, I mean with um, Alberto Del Rio. Big Show returns that while he is sorry for what he did, he's not sorry for the result of it, as it has lit a fire in, Big Sh in, in Mark Henry, the likes of which we've never seen from him before. And he warns that if he doesn't cool off, he could take out that fire as well as light it up. They just the two of them get heated and decide they're not gonna wait 48 hours to Sunday and decide to get it on. Teddy Long, who was out there to introduce the two, says, "Hold on, that player. Ain't gonna be over my fight on my term. You gonna fight it out? Let God sort it out, player. Ha ha ha!" Next up, Divas match: Rosa Mendez versus Kelly Kelly. Next, uh, we get another backstage promo by by Christian. Who who does a little makes a deleted scene from the the first and only movie Randy Orton has ever been in? That's what I am, and it's pretty funny if you just look at it. Just just look it up on online. You'll probably find it. Next up, Gabriel. It's it's former Nexus members and former Core members, Heath Slater and and Justin Gabriel against each other. Uh, Slater cuts a very blandish promo, reminding everyone he's a one man rock band. This match was short, but it was good for what it did. Both of these guys look pretty good, but Gabriel's the one who wins with the 450, with, with the um, 450 splash, his signature maneuver. So there's that. So right now, I, li I like the build for the SmackDown um, Money in the Bank. All of them have been looking very good in these last few weeks leading up to the Money in the Bank, and really, it could be anyone's match to win. So who knows? Last main event. Kane versus Randy Orton. Kane cut a promo with um, Teddy Long earlier, but I didn't get a chance to watch it. So anyway, it's a pretty standard big man, little man matchup. Nothing really exciting. Just when Orton's about to hit the RKO, Christian comes out for the first time, and and both um, Kane and um, Orton are knocked outside the ring. As the ref is counting. Uh, Christian gets up and get in, he gets into um, Randy's face and just starts baiting him. Randy chases him around the ring as he tries to go back. Um, Christian hits Orton with the most deadly weapon in professional wrestling: a bottle of water. That's right. You don't believe me? 
I always keep a spare, just in case. Anyone tried to break into my house, they're gonna get a face full of this water. And Joe knows it too. Anyway, Kane wins via count out. Orton tries to get his hands on, on Christian, but ends up back in the ring and eats a right hand from Kane. Kane and Christian begin beating down on the champion when Kane realizes, wait a minute, I don't like you, and tries to turn on Christian. Christian gets the hell out of Dodge, and um, Orton comes up and RKO's Kane. Christian returns to the ring and gets a spear in on, um, on Randy and beats him down. Then he goes outside the ring, gets a chair and the title, and prepares to lay Randy out, but Randy was able to fight him off, gets the chair, and starts beating the piss out of the Big Red Machine. And so, that's how SmackDown ends. My thoughts? Slightly above average show. Uh, the matches were pretty good, save for the Divas match. They did what they were meant to do, the build up, the, um, to build up for Money in the Bank. Uh, Christian's promos literally were ripping um, Randy Orton apart. And um, it's making me look forward to even more to this Sunday. Even the, even the Henry Show match is, is working out to be, is, is shaping up to be good. And the only downside about it tonight was, well, the Divas match. And the fact that Cole and Booker's arguments kind of eclipsed a lot of the good matches. Ugh, Cole, you, you insufferable bastard. But anyway, that's SmackDown. Tune in this Sunday when I review Money in the Bank. Quite possibly the most important pay-per-view of the year, if not the decade. Because history will be made What's going to happen this Sunday? Who's going to win the Money in the Bank ladder matches? Will they cash it in that night? Or will they wait and bide their time? Will Christian be, be able to finally get back his title, which he richly deserves? And what's going to happen in that main event? So many things are going to go down this Sunday. And I'm going to be watching it. I'm going to be sit down, get some buffalo wings, grab an ice cold root beer, and just bask in the history. If you, are, if you are a fan of wrestling, if you're only a fair aware fan of fat wrestling, if you don't really know that much about wrestling but would like to get into it, Sunday is your day. Watch it. Do whatever you need to do. Steal it. Pay for it. Go to a bar. Suck a guy's dick just to get in. And just, just to get the money needed to pay for it. Whatever. Do not miss Money in the Bank. Well, that's my thoughts and my review. It's a Shin Tiger Curl, that dude in the straw hat, and Joe, saying good night and wrestle on.